Welcome to the Realmcast. Welcome to the Realmcast. I am your host, the Mortal Kombat Phantom. And with me as always is my co-host, our Lore Master Yanni. Welcome, Yanni. Thanks, Phantom. And today we'd like to welcome actor and voice actor Jameson Price. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Good to be here. Glad to have you. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jameson, before we start diving into anything like and start going into kind of your career and stuff like that, we're curious, how did you kind of first get introduced to Mortal Kombat? Oh. Well, I think the first thing I really remember about Mortal Kombat was the commercial. But like that that early commercial where um it's in the city and everybody's running and running. And then of course the kids go, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, that was such an iconic commercial. Um, so simple, but it worked beautifully. So that stuck in my mind. Um, and then of course the, the controversy and the whole um, rating system that came out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't, I started working in games more like early 2000s. Um, because in the nineties, the memory wasn't enough to really allow for a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of voice <laughs> involved other than a few grunts the engineers would do. Um, so I didn't have an, uh, an eye towards the, the games. Um, though that controversy was huge and, you know, Senate got involved and it was really silly. Uh, and then just, yeah, I mean, this is kind of amazing um over the top dark humor violence that was in it was was quite memorable didn't do a whole lot of playing of the game um i was a little too old by then unfortunately (laughs) (laughs) i had to work for a living has that changed at all since since then have you actually given the games a go tried to play them well sort of um I do. I love games uh, and I, I start them and then I get stuck because mm. I'm an old guy. Uh, and it's just my mind. My son, he gets boom, gets through stuff. Uh, he left me behind years ago <laughs> uh, he, when he was like 10. He left me behind. Um, <laughs> it was very embarrassing. <laughs> he used to beat me with you know, whatever character I was voicing because uh, I, would, I would play with my character. Um, and I, I didn't let him do Mortal Kombat because it was too violent for a child, uh, I thought. Um, yeah. Um, but the things like um, uh, Soul Calibur was one that he just destroyed me in. Um, and he would take whatever, I mean, if I'd usually play my character of Algol, uh, and then he would take that character and beat me with it. <laughs> <laughs> not not realizing that would good that would really piss dad off <laughs> just like, to hear your own voice <laughs> here, let, let me push the button the button on your dad and it was very funny he, yeah. it's the only time i've ever really gotten upset with him it's like he did that to me multiple times um, but so i don't play a whole lot of the game unfortunately um because i i, I get stuck in games but oh well <laughs> And, and there's the time involved. Um, mm. Games are very time consuming. Um, and they make them that way because, yeah, we want to provide as much entertainment as possible. Um, mm. But when you are, you know, working gig to gig to gig, uh, you don't have 30 or 40 hours <laughs> to put into entertainment. <laughs> okay. Give me half an hour and an hour. Good. I'm right. You know, <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you might not have played the games so much but do you still have a favorite mortal kombat character oh not really i mean the characters are so varied which is kind of i think part of the fun of it mm-hmm. um i mean i i was ermac is I mean, also because i voice him uh, <laughs> uh ermac is a, is a lot of fun um part, i guess partially because i i you know have to get into the bio of him and know all the souls involved and, and some of the stuff that, that we get into with it. Um, but 
but I mean, each character has some, has got some different fun things going for them. Um, not only in, in the way that they fight, but also just in the, in the lore behind it all. Do you think Ermac would be your favorite one to, to voice at least? Um, yeah, I think so because it's a challenge. Um, when I was being you know explained, okay, this is a compilation of a bunch of souls and they're together and it's, it's magic. And it's like, okay, how do you voice that? Yeah. Um, and I remember we, we tried a bunch of different things, um, just to kind of experiment. Cause that's what you do when you're trying to create a character, um, or a voice for a character. It's like, okay, you know, let's try this. Um, and let's try that. And so I can't remember, I mean, Ermac's been a while, um, 2015 or even, but I mean, before. I think there was, there was kind of, there was, you know, kind of, there was a, a, a ghouly ghostly kind of thing. Um, and then they put, they, put all processing effects on it to make it sound even better. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ermac was a lot of fun. Uh, I've only done what Ermac. Oh, noob Cybot. Noob Cybot. That was kind of fun. When I found out what noob Cybot's name meant, I was like, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Cause I didn't, I didn't know until somebody explained it to me. Oh, great. Um, and then he's okay. So noob Cybot is the, older brother of sub-zero like the original yeah, sub-zero yes, that's yes. Right, yeah because <laughs> it was a fl- it was a flashback that i was in that i played that and he gets offed and then sub-zero comes in steve loom comes in and saves the day um and avenges me um so yeah i mean it's it's fun to to try to um to voice any character because we, we take a look at the the artwork um we look we read the bios and try to add life experience to to the voice um and it's a challenge with any different character to to put all that together and make it into a realistic package that is Uh going to be um you know true to the character interesting for the the player to go oh you know i can hear that in the voice so that's what we work towards so as far as you know the voice acting you've actually Began, like started you with your roots with acting itself when you were a kid, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, how, how did that start? <laughs> <laughs> well, it started way back in the, uh, I think, fourth grade was the first time I, I got on, the, on stage and loved it. Um, but it really was, I had, I mean, this voice came with puberty, I suppose. Um, it, it developed <laughs> along. Wait, uh, you didn't just start off at, like at this? At a young age, I had a, no, but it was close. I mean, I, they were at, at, you know, in like eighth grade, they were like, Ooh, deep voice. Look at this. Uh, so there was always something remarkable, um, vocally that I had. And I had many, um, people along the way go, Ooh, you could make, you know, make, make money with this. I'm like, how can I do that? Um, you know, I understood being an actor, but at that point there wasn't the kind of opportunities for voice acting that we had now. Yeah. I watched cartoons every Saturday morning. So I should have gone, oh, hmm, put those two together. Um, and But I did vocal competition of, of oral interpretation, telling stories, reading poems, and fun things like that. Then when I was uh, coming out of college, there were you know, projects where people would ask me to do voice stuff for them, narration or um, eh, band introductions. Uh, <laughs> okay, sure, I could do that. Uh, fun little things that, you know, it's like, okay, this is, this is moving me down that road. I went to graduate school, um, in Long Beach here, uh, Long Beach, California, and right below LA. So I could have access to LA. And that was when I was working with Dorothy Fawn. Um, and Dorothy and her husband, Tom, uh, are, were at the point uh, are still now, but they were, um, working on anime. And so they were busy doing stuff and, Dorothy's like, hey, you should come in and you know do this. You'd be good at it. Turned out I was. Uh, <laughs> and um, from there, a lot of the anime projects just kind of grew exponentially with being working with different directors and things. That then ended up going into video games um, because at a certain point, with video games, there's the the storage, the memory on them got large enough that they started to look towards, ooh, we can put dialogue in these games and make them more interesting and more fun and more cinematic. And that's just continued to pr- progress along those lines. And a lot of the, um, the dubbing community and the anime actors 
uh, in LA ended up going into gaming. Huh. It's, it's always been something interesting to see how many voice actors actually have moved between anime and video games. Did you see yourself specifically mm -hmm. sticking with just anime and then moving into video games or how did, like, did you expect oh, that at all? No. Um, I'm an actor. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, uh, I mean, I started off on the stage, um, the legit stage, uh, though I do not count myself a singer. I am more so now I've worked very hard towards that, but I did musicals when I'm like, I can't sing, but I'll do your musicals tour. <laughs> uh, it was wild. Um, so I was doing outside my comfort zone genres, um, kind of from the beginning. And, um, so when I was doing stage work with, with Dorothy in this play and she went, Hey, we're doing this anime stuff. You should come and check it out. It was a different world. Um, I didn't know anime at the point. So I was really introduced to it and then also taught the techniques of it and, and what, the, what are the tropes and, you know, <laughs> the, the specific gasp <laughs> that's used. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> you all have to go <laughs> all the time. It's like, wow, that's interesting. Um, so I was just, I mean, it was, it was fun to do. Um, I found a, a certain freedom and um, a relaxation with a microphone that I did not experience with the camera. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I moved to Long Beach to go to grad school so I could be in LA and do film and TV. And I am just not as comfortable in front of a camera as behind a mic. Hmm. The microphone just, uh, I mean, I, part of it is that you, there's um your imagination is your limit mm. when you're on camera it's like okay make up hair look at this and you know look this way and do eye line and it's very very technical and very um not pigeonholy but it is but it is kind of like this is what you it's a very narrow interpretation of your abilities and a lot of times people get locked into a certain character and then you'll see them do something totally different. You're like, oh, I didn't know they could. Yeah, because we're not allowed to. With a microphone, whatever you can do with your voice, you can make you can make money at, and you can you can succeed at. Mm -hmm. So there, and especially back in the late '90s, early 2000s, there's a there was a lot of anonymity involved too because nobody knew about voice actors. They didn't care about people like us, dubbers. Um, now it's like, ooh they're like mini celebrities or we're, we're mini celebrities. Um, so going from anime, um, into, into games, into commercial work, um, promos and trailers. I mean, there's just the, the, uh, I love doing all of it. And, um, it's, it's fun to try anything and everything. And yeah, you know, that's where getting into, uh, announcing names at graduations was like, Oh, <laughs> sure. I'll give that a try. And it turned out I was good at it. And, uh, <laughs> right. And now I've, I've, that's a major part, part of my career every year is announcing names at graduation ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally I get the request for the Mortal Kombat voice. I'm like, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> oh, see, if, if, you're, if you're doing my graduation ceremony, I would have almost demanded it. Yeah. <laughs> I can get a little close, but we, we can't go full on Mortal Kombat. Um, <laughs> but I'll, you know, they'll... Uh, people will write out their names and write it out really long with lots of letters. Like, you know, it says, so it's, you know, it's the, basically the let's get ready to rumble kind of thing. <laughs> um, so, so you'll get a name. You're like, okay, big breath. And just like, oh. <laughs> you know, I can relate to the whole not wanting to be in front of the camera. Like when we first started this podcast, we would only do audio and now we're showing video too. Yeah. And it took Yanni quite a bit of convincing to get me on, on screen because <laughs> it's just, it's not what I do. I'm, I'm here to, to illuminate your ear buds, you know? <laughs> right. And our, and our eyes now. So, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> so as far as your, your anime stuff, I mean, 
for for our guests that don't know, you've done like so much different anime. You've done uh, Rurouni yeah. Kenshin. You've done Digimon, Cowboy Bebop, Dot Hack, uh, Naruto, Code Geass, Fate Stay Night, Bleach, Ergo Proxy, uh, Pokemon, Jojo, um, and then Pokemon. Who, oh yeah, Jojo Bizarre Adventure. Like oh everything. yeah, Did, little Jojo. So, which one was the first one that kind of brought you into this world of anime voice acting? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know what the first one I worked on, because when I was starting off, I didn't know anything. So, um, the director was, I did what's called Bits and Walla. So, uh, you know, Guard D, Man C, it was just little tiny things, or, or, or Walla stuff, which is where... In a, um, a a group scene, like a restaurant scene, you will hear snippets of conversations from people. Or if you're, they're walking down the sidewalk, this couple over here is arguing about dinner or something. Um, and th- so that's us going oh, and making up some kind of conversation that's <laughs> that's generic enough to be appropriate for this situation and not so specific that somebody could go, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. So you have to be very, very careful how you, because a lot of times we're coming up with on this, on the, it's just, it's meaningless. So it's not scripted. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, and the smaller bit parts, those are, are scripted out. But so uh, I was doing, you know, not thankless, but I was doing little no namey sort of things to, to learn the business and to, um, and to be tested. So the, I mean, the director, so that he knew he could rely on me. Um, and that I, that I could rise to whatever occasions. So he would throw a little, you know, okay, here's a little bigger nugget to play with. Here's a little more. Let me see what you could do with this. Um, and it was probably like a year or so of doing little bits and things um, before larger parts started to come in. Um, one of the first larger parts was the Colonel in Akira. Mm. Um, and I didn't realize that was you. I didn't know what Akira was. I was like, wow, this is, this is really interesting. This is kind of a cool movie and, and really weird. And oh my God, what's happening here? Um, <laughs> and, you know, then years later, I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, okay. it's a huge deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, there's been a couple different dubs. Were you the first version of the dub or were you on the remaster? Ah, 2001. 2001. Oh, was it 2001? Okay, yeah, yeah, it was 2001. Think, whatever, whatever that was. Yeah, I think that I was mean, it, when the remaster came out. Which I think was, that was the remaster. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Wow. <laughs> That's right, because there was something before. There was one before that. Uh huh. Um, now, do you yeah. find it difficult to, you know, go through the voicing uh, and kind of match the? I mean, the characters don't have fully articulate lips, but more so than American <sighs> cartoons. Uh, Is that yes. difficult for you to do? No. Oh, and really? that's the, that's the interesting thing. Um, it's called their, their flaps and it's called sinking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sinking to the flaps. Um, it is a weird skill. And I know really good actors who can't sink. Mm. Now there's a lot more leeway now because of the digital age and pro tools and being able to compress and expand without pitch change. And, but, I started, it wasn't magnetic tape, <laughs> but it was just past that. Uh-huh. It was, it was digital tape. Um, but it was, they didn't have the ability to do all of that expansion compression, um, mm. the way that we, we do now. So you had to be more accurate. Um, and in that regard, I think we were 20 loops an hour was good because it would take you a bit of time to get there. Um, so I've heard it described as, 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 as a musical ability, but I'm not musically trained. I don't have, I don't play an instrument. I mean, I try to bang on a little hang drum, but, um, so I was able to look at the flaps and look at the, you know, okay, here's, here's the preview. So we watched the preview in whatever language it was, you know, in this case, Japanese, and then you kind of get a feel for what the, that actor did. So you want to honor what he did. And then, that's the rhythm of it. And then this is what somebody has written. This is, is the um, script adaptation for that. Most times it works fine. Sometimes you have to adapt it and change it a little bit to make it fit. Um, and sometimes there's really weird, awkward pauses that you have to mm, make that work. 
but I was able to, Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't that hard for me to do years down the road. It's really easy for me to do. And Mm -hmm. I can, I don't think about it anymore. I'll watch the preview. My brain will process that flappage. I'll look at what my line is and then the two will go together. And it's sometimes scary. (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm like, how did that work? And it did. Uh, it was very evident when the pandemic happened <clears throat> uh-huh. because we were doing everything remotely and we had as actors a horrific lag. So we would, we, we, the video would come in and we'd be speaking to it and it kind of wouldn't quite match up weird. And then they would play it back and it would totally not match up. And like, I'm sorry, it was terrible. And the engineer's like, no, we're it fit perfectly. You're fine. Wow. Oh. I'm like, what? Because of the lag between the video and audio, we couldn't tell. But you could sit there and go, I, this is the pattern. This is the line. And I could fit it together. <laughs> and I would have to go just, all right. Now I have to just trust that you're, and you know, of course, I have no control. Just here. There it is. And if you, you tell me if it needs to go this way or that way or and be longer or shorter. Uh, but that was kind of kind of interesting. There's a new. Um, no, not even new anymore. But instead of. Um, like a script where we'll walk into a booth, the normal business is we walk into a booth. <laughs> Sometimes you have no idea what you're working on. You don't know who the character is or what's going on. And you're just given. Oh, here's a picture. What's his voice? Okay. And then you look at some lines and you try to make it all fit together. And then you'll get a preview of, okay, this is how the, the energy of the scene is and then make it work. There's something called, oh God, we call it karaoke. Um, it's got, it goes by some different names, but basically it's a karaoke strip. So you'll watch, that's where your script is. So you'll watch the scene go by and as the scene goes by, the words are going by underneath and it hits a certain point. So there's a marker. And that's when you're supposed to say that word. Mm. Um, what's difficult about that is I'm, I'm trained to watch, like have three eyes. One is watching the mouth and the flaps. The other is reading the script. Uh, and what's the other one doing? I think it was three involved. Anyway, there's, there's like a split focus basically happening. So you have to memorize or read the script, look at the mouth. And be aware of the entire scene. Now, with this little strip business, you're just sitting there and going, okay, I'm reading the words, I'm reading the words, I'm reading the words, I'm reading the words, I'm reading the words. And I'm not seeing this, I'm not seeing the scene. I'm not watching the flaps. I'm not watching that mouth happen. And um, I, I guess that's like the new, more efficient way of working. Not for me. Um, and you make it work as, as well as you can. But uh, I, I miss the old, okay. Here's the line. There's the character. Here's a preview. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. I got it. And then psh, you put it together. You seem to have adjusted so. to all the changes, whether it be through technology or whatever, like over the years, you obviously, I mean, you have to, as, as yeah. Phantom said, like he didn't even realize that it was you and Akira, but I mean, when I, ah. when I was going through, I mean, I, I, I know you know, you as a voice actor, I, I hear your voice and I know it's you. And then sometimes mm-hmm. I just, I have no idea. So when I was going through a list of, you know, the projects you've worked on, I, I'm like, oh my God, I love that character. I didn't realize it was you. And I, I already know of you. <laughs> I mean, we, we mentioned all of your appearances in, uh, or, you know, the, the, your little project where you were in anime, but your list of video game appearances too are is extremely long. You've been in Lord of the Rings as Aragorn. You've been in League of Legends as Garen. You've yeah. been in uh, the Heroes of the Storm and Diablo Three as Harzim. Uh, I mean, you you've been in uh, loads of games, and I think yep. that itself speaks for your ability to <laughs> adjust to well the flappage, I oh, suppose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the flappage. <laughs> Well, the wonderful thing about games is, I mean, it's, and there are times when the games are brought over um, from another country, and then we do have to match flaps. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's more, we'll have to match timing because it's very specific as to what's allowed. Mm-hmm. And when you have to cram six English words into two Japanese syllables, <laughs> and you're like, that's not happening. <laughs> We're going to need to change this. Uh, because sometimes, 
you know, those two Japanese syllables have the meaning of those six English words, but oh well. Uh, so there, there are certain constraints that happen there. But a lot of times in video games, there's a lot more um, freedom, uh, especially, I mean, in new video games, because we'll record prior to the animation. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you're oftentimes just looking at um, some artwork that the artists have come up with. So you'll see an image, but um, you won't get to, you know, you, you might see a little um, kind of cartoony. This is how the action is going to flow. Um, but you don't see a fully realized version uh, like you do in dubbing where you can go, oh, I see all this is happening. I can hear the music and the effects. And, you know, I know I need to be this loud. Uh, but video games, it's a little more like original animation. And that you can you can pace yourself in your own way and, and do your own thing as the character. And then they'll animate to you. Yeah, like, so when it comes to your voice acting, uh, you know, you have such a deep voice. Is there a particular role that you t tend to target when you're trying to get these roles or is it more of a whatever comes across your desk sort of thing it's whatever comes across my desk um as an actor we like to play range um i want to be challenged i want to do uh <laughs> i mean yeah as, as yanni was saying there's just like a lot of a lot of range in there there's there's some crazy stuff um whether it's Jelly Jiggler and Bobo 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 Bobo, um, or uh, Ovan and Dot Hack, um, uh, in Fire Emblem. Oh God, what was his name? Started with a V. Virium. Ah, Virium. Ah, thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, those and some of those characters were not deep and resonant at all, and they were all. And it's again, I mean, I got kind of really creepy, weird, lilty um, because, you, yeah, usually what I get hired for is generals, gods, authority figures, dads, um, <laughs> because I've got this big degree to and, uh, make use of that. Yes. Oftentimes in video games, um, we're playing multiple characters just because it makes more sense for them um, time wise uh, is you have one kind of main character. Um, and then you'll do smaller ancillary characters. Uh, and you want to make those so different that hopefully the player doesn't realize it's the same actor. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you end up talking to yourself and that's where it gets interesting. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, being able to, to play a lot of different, um, ranges and I don't have the kind of chameleon voice that, uh, some of my friends I envy because they can do so many different distinct voices that you go, that's not the same person. And yet it is. Um, I've done that a couple of times where people, and even sometimes where I've gone, is that me? I don't know. <laughs> you know it doesn't sound like me. Uh, but in general, the stuff that I get is, is yeah. Using this. <laughs> do you ever find that you have to make a, like much of a distinction between those voices, like consciously, or do you, is it in oh, yeah. situations where oh yeah you, yeah. yeah you have to make you want to make um as much of a um a, a much of a, as a distinction between them uh, as possible even doing um you know big gravitas gravelly voices i want to make sure that garen is is different from um iron tager who is different from lu bu um and they're all big mm, characters, uh, writer that, I mean, they all should have a different flavor to them, even though they're very much in the same range. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully I've made some distinction between them. That's what, certainly what I, I consciously try to do. And that's in acting. That's just whatever their bio is with their, that life history and that character using, you know, this part of my voice. How does that reflect? And how does that um, manifest itself for the, the hearer? Okay. Well, I mean, aside from the voice acting then specifically, you, I mean, you have mentioned already that uh, you were involved in some live action, but you do prefer the voice acting because of that sort of the, the ability it gives you in, with regards to just animation itself, right? 
but you have been involved in some live action, uh, mm-hmm. most notably for me, specifically uh, in Westworld. But do you see yourself doing more live action in the uh. future? <laughs> Um, yes. Um, I had, because I did have this big, deep voice from puberty, uh, in my youth, my voice did not match how I looked. (laughs) (laughs) And so on camera kind of stuff was funky because I'm like, Ooh, he he looks like a 20 year old and sounds like a 40 year old. That's kind of weird. (laughs) Um, and on stage you could do that because you have makeup and you're, you know, there's a certain um, is what is it's the, uh, the willing suspension of disbelief is what it's called uh, that the audience will have sitting there and go oh yeah I know he's only 20 but he's playing a 40 year old it's okay uh, when you do that on camera they're like look at that makeup job or he's too young to be playing that role <clears throat> so kind of my, my look and my voice have come together more and more as I've gotten older which is nice uh, the pandemic screwed everything up. Mm. Um, and I'm now at a point where my son is in college and he's the last of three. So I was, w- when my daughter was born, um, my, okay. My, I have a stepdaughter who I met when she was five. Um, but when my daughter was born, I ended up doing, that's when I did the Patriot. Okay. And I was away from home for two months, two and a half months filming that. I mean, it was a long time. Uh, and I was also auditioning all the time. So I would be gone driving up to LA. I'm basically, I missed a good portion of her, her early childhood. Oh. Like this is not right. Uh, and so when my son came along, uh, and that was in 2003, that allowed and, and at that point is when the whole video game explosion was happening. And all of a sudden we're like, Ooh, let's use these guys. Cause now we have all this memory to play with. And I discovered that instead of driving an hour uh, to some location in LA and sitting around and waiting to audition for five minutes and then driving another hour and a half back in traffic. And just, if you were on set, you're on set for 10 to 12 hours. And yeah, that I could in two hours or four hours, make the same amount of money. <laughs> it's like, wow, this voice acting is great stuff. <laughs> um, because we could still get a day rate and I could pick my, I could take my son to school and I could pick him up and I'd say, you know, because when you're doing on camera work, they're like, okay, report to set at 5 a.m. Uh, and you're dismissed at midnight. Okay. And, and you're there. When you're doing voice work, they go, okay, so when are you available? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> so I was like t- 10 to 2. And I could mm-hmm. take my son to school, still make it up to work, work for four hours or less, a lot of times, uh, and then drive home and pick him up. And so I was a much um, better parent and father and more present uh, in my son's early childhood um, than my daughter's. Uh, she didn't suffer, though. She, she turned out pretty well. Uh, <laughs> But so I, it was really in the last 20 years I've, or more, I've been concentrating on, um, on more family life and, and voiceover in that, in that regard. And it's been great. Um, my on-camera agent has been, you know, poking and pushing. <laughs> Get me out there again. Um, and there's been some, some health concerns as well that's been happening. But that should all within the next six months be better. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get back into on camera stuff. And now that I look a little more like I sound, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that'll work. I mean, it, it did work certainly for Westworld. Um, that was great. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was a very cool shoot. But again, it was be there at you know, like five in the morning and, you know, not home till quite late. You know, <laughs> it wasn't quite midnight, but it was still a long, long couple of days. So let's jump into Mortal Kombat a little bit. You yeah. first kind of appeared with, in Mortal Kombat in 2011 with the reimagined of Mortal Kombat, or were you in there du- at all du- before 2000, that? 2009, wasn't it? Oh, was released, it 2009? It released in 2011. Mortal Kombat 9? Yeah, that's right. No, oh, 9 released in 2011? Mm-hmm. You oh. might have done recording for it prior, though. I thought it was 2009. I don't know. Um, 
So maybe it was 2011. Seems like it was longer ago than that. But yeah, so t- t- Mortal Kombat 9 was my first um, working with Mortal Kombat. Yeah, another realm. Uh, and like for those of our listeners who don't know, Jameson here not only played Noob Cybot, but was also the announcer for that game, yeah. correct? Yeah. So yes. how did you land this role? I mean, that's like the Noob Cybot role is impressive, but being the announcer for the entire game is something. you know significant for oh yeah, yeah that was something that everybody that, talks that about every year <laughs> so cool um because it is such an iconic um i mean this we all imitate fatality <laughs> and all that stuff so um to, to, to end up being the one doing it now was just fantastic uh i can't remember right really what the audition process was for that um i do know that was when um, Midway um, had owned the game. So it was Nether Realm, but it was Midway. Anyway, uh, yes. it was before, it was before that WB. That before WB. So you started working on it yeah. before WB actually grabbed right. the whole thing. And, and yeah. WB ended up releasing it. But yeah, it was a Midway game at first. Yeah, because I remember, I remember it was Midway. And I remember there was a whole to-do where it then was bought by WB. But um I had worked act- actually with um, the cinematics director, I believe. I believe he's a cin- cinematics director. Um, but I had done a short film with him um, several years prior. So he at least knew of my work um, in you know, a, a more intimate detail. Um, it wasn't anything like Mortal Kombat. But so when I auditioned for it, um, that may have given me an edge or I don't know. He, I mean, he knew who I was. Uh, and so I can't remember what the process process was from that, but it was amazing to, to get selected to do it. And, uh, yeah. So then it was trying to figure out, uh, and to, also to make Ermac that voice different from the announcer voice. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you something about the announcer yeah. voice. Um, so, you know, a lot of times when we imagine the announcers in Mortal Kombat, we, uh, I think this is something kind of traced back to Mortal Kombat 2. We announce it as Shao Kahn, like the, the final boss being the announcer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. But, but in your rendition, I mean, or you weren't cast to play Shao Kahn at all, which no. is, is very interesting that they made this two separate voices. Did you yes. have any feelings about that or was it just kind I- of a... Nothing. I didn't really know. Um, I mean, I kind of knew Shao Kahn as the overall, um, but that's the, th- that, that was the announcer until I was doing it. Um, and then there was some backlash <laughs> on the internet. Like, Oh, okay. Um, as there always is when there's any kind of change. Um, luckily I, they, the fans accepted me pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and it worked out. Uh, and I can't remember exactly what the rationale um, within within that why why it wasn't no why it was no longer Shao Kahn. It's very interesting because you did sound just like Shao Kahn. Well, not exactly, um, but I mean that's you have to if you go really far away from that voice, they're the fans really are not going to accept it. Mm-hmm. That's the, that style is very much the, okay, this is, um, canon, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> right. if you will yeah. with it. So I had to take that as my jumping off point. And then I would do, you know, multiple takes because it's amazing how, um, low volume, these things are. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the technical things, but I give them a, a big range. And, you know, it's not a big Johnny Cage wins kind of thing. It's more of a Johnny Cage wins. Mm. And it's letting it um, sit in a, um, a lower, deeper place in my register. Uh, it's my, I call my rumbly voice. It's when things rumble. Um, and that picks up on the microphone and in whatever processing they do, it sounds amazing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> wow. That's really cool. 
That's so, interesting you say that because yeah. I remember in Mortal Kombat Nine, it always had like you could feel the bass in in the announcer's <laughs> voice and things like that. Which I mean, it it sent you chills like because it was just yes, perfectly yes. executed. Yeah. <laughs> no, the the chill factor. Um, and I don't know. I mean, it's fun. I and I'll do that live when I'm doing the names, uh, announcing names. If it's if it if I can get to the rumble at the end, it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, these are in stadiums and it's a, you know, huge sound system. And when you hear Mortal Kombat through something like that, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just incredible uh, through a, a large uh, sound system. That rumble is chilling. I mean, it, it's, it's physically affecting, which is very cool. So you would continue your involvement in Mortal Kombat X in 2015 then? But this time moving from Noob Saiba, yes. who obviously did not return for Ermac, as you've mentioned, as well as the announcer voice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ermac was 10. Okay. Yeah. Timer. So Noob Saiba was an announcer was nine and then Ermac mm-hmm. in 10. Um, yes. And that, I'm not, yes, I got to keep the announcer, which is nice. So you've already mentioned that you did prefer Ermac's voice. What sort of different approach did you take here between Noob Saibot and Ermac? What was the sort of change you had there other than the production changes? Um, well, Ermac has the kind of, um, I mean, Noob Saibot wasn't as like magical. Mm-hmm. It wasn't put together by a sorcerer. So Ermac had to have a, um, a weird, no, almost non-human sort of sound uh, is what I was thinking when mm-hmm. I was doing it. But also, there's a bit of tortured souls, multiple, you know, entities gathered together, feeling, at least that I'm trying to give with it, uh, if I recall correctly. I'm trying to remember what Noob Saibot was, because I had to make him different from the announcer. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember exactly, yeah, what I did differently on that, except that, I mean, he was fighting... So rather, because the announcer is pretty chill in some ways, uh, and then the fighter would ha- would have more efforts and be more uh, direct. Mm. Actually, yeah, I can see that now that you mentioned that. When I go back and listen now, I'm going to imagine Noob Saibot being the announcer for <laughs> the uh, Mortal Kombat uh, games. <laughs> that's fun. I mean, you know the the MKX. There was a lot of debate about the fact that Noob Saibot's voice changed so significantly. Uh, MK11. Did, did anybody... Oh, is that... Yeah, that's right. So MK11, yeah, it's... it's the, the character's oh. voice is completely different now. Yes. Um, did you get dragged into any of those online battles at all? Or <laughs> you know, people reaching out to you saying... Oh, you know, no. oh yeah. I mean, people certainly said stuff. Um, and, uh, and they were comparisons and side by sides and stuff like that. And it's, you know, I didn't get dragged into any of it because I don't I don't jump into any of those um controversies if I can help it. Uh I mean it's totally up to the powers that be who they cast as what. And you know, I'm thankful to get a gig and to get a character and then if it goes away, it goes away and you know somebody else gets to do their interpretation of it. Were you hoping uh, to return as Noob so, Saibot though? Yeah. Oh, um, well, I, I hope to return as anybody. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have absolutely no control over it, which is, you know, an actor's life. Uh, but well, and they don't, cause noob wasn't in X, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. He showed up in 11, but not X. Yeah. Yeah. So the characters don't show up. Um, in each you know iteration or reiteration of of MK, so who knows who's coming back, when and where? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thankful to return as anybody, um, <laughs> uh, noob or or Ermac. Um, they're the only ones I've gotten to really do so far, and the announcer, of course, he's lots of fun. And it was it was cool that in eleven they brought you back to play the classic announcer voice again, which, mm. you know, yeah. that uh, when you first started playing it, that wasn't a realization. I think, was it Kronika's voice that came out first? Yanni, do you remember? Uh, 
It wasn't Kronika's. Uh, Kronika's was the mobile reward. Uh, there was a different announcer voice for MK11, as far as I remember. And then your voice, Jameson, uh, was the classic announcer voice, which you could switch to, as far as I remember. Ah, uh, okay. I have not, I don't think, done 11 yet. Um, so, yeah, I know that I did it. I heard that they had a lot of other characters do announcing as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could yeah. you could pick, you know, you could pick Raiden to do it. You could pick Sonya or what. So mm. you had different um, uh, you know, people doing the announcer voice, which is, you know, nice and sort of terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is replaceable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I was, I was glad to be a part of it. <laughs> it. It was actually a very interesting decision from them because uh, in this case, we've always been used to, as we said, sort of Shao Kahn or a mainline boss doing it. For example, Quan Chi's voice in Mortal Kombat 4. In this case, it kind of allowed certain voice actors or certain characters rather to show off their voice acting in different ways, right? And yes. for example, everybody's oh, yeah. been asking for a, um, a Scarlet uh, announcer voice for quite a while. I've totally forgotten her name and she, she was amazing mm. in Mortal Kombat 11. I'd have to get it. But how about the sort of differences between Mortal Kombat 9 and X? Because in 9, all you had at the beginning was sort of like this grunt Whereas in X and 11, they added the little pre-fight dialogues. For example, Ermac, you had one where if you uh, fought Ermac versus Ermac, he'd, he would have this, we are, we are you, but, or what is it? We are many, but times infinity, blah, blah, blah. like it, it like multiplied. <laughs> it was interesting. Did you find that fun? How, how yes. was that? Oh yeah. Because when you were, uh, when we were recording, um, you're like, this is a weird one. And like, oh, that's the mirror one. Like, what's that? So they had explained to me that, yeah, the player can pick the same character and you could, excuse me, you could do Ermac on Ermac, um, which, of course, <laughs> logically makes sense. But you you would want them to have slightly different dialogue and to make it kind of work together. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of clever. I thought that it might have also given you maybe some direction regarding the characters. Because at the start of uh, this uh, conversation, we were talking about how you'll see the character and give them a voice and go through their lore to sort of get some backstory on them and figure out how to speak. Do you feel that you had more direction with Mortal Kombat X as Ermac than you did in Noob, with Noob Saibot and Mortal Kombat 9 purely because of the pre-fight dialogue? Well, more information is more information. Mm. So uh, if you have in the script, the pre-fight dialogue gives you more uh, insight into the character. Yeah. But the descriptions and the bios are so well-developed in Mortal Kombat. Um, I mean, the, the lore is what really makes the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, the gore is fun, but the lore is what makes it. Yeah. Yeah, know, definitely. Sing and go through the ages. So, there's so much to um, to learn and and absorb and then use as an actor. Do you, whenever you're kind of going through these voice lines, do you ever get to ad lib a little bit or you know kind of take your own spin to things or is it pretty direct? Ah, it de it depends. I think um, I have heard of uh, of some other actors who are. A little more ad libby and more free mm -hmm. with the dialogue. Um, the announcer can't be, so I'm yeah. pretty locked into <laughs> so and so wins. I mean, there's not much I can play with there. <laughs> um, and Ermac wasn't in eleven, or I think he was, but he just died. Yeah, that was it. No, yeah, I, yeah. I saw, I saw, he <laughs> uh, fell onto a stalag mite, whatever mite? the one on the bottom is. Yeah, spike. Um, <laughs> I think it's a mite. Yeah. Uh, he fell on a spike. Spike, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Do you get to choose your voices, though, at least? I mean, like, uh, or is it kind of like, hey, uh, the, the director's there and he's like, hey, you need to make sure that this one's lower or this one you need to be a little bit more raspy because it's a, a ghoul or something? Yeah, it's very collaborative. Um, okay. So, yeah, we, you know, look at the artwork or read the description <laughs> mm -hmm. or are just told the description sometimes. Um, 
and then we'll do our our inter- you know here here's a what what do you what do you think of this and then the director yes very much will go oh that's good but can you add a little more age can you take away some of the gravel um can you you know give them a sense of humor can you can you make them taller uh, there's lots of different <laughs> weird okay um, different directions that can be given uh, and some of them are kind of nonsensical but they can actually help you and be like oh taller yes i can make him taller now he's taller look at that uh yeah. so it, it affects actors in different ways um different kinds of direction and, and different directors will have different ways of doing it but it is a collaborative process because the director has the overall um vision mm-hmm. and is trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and you know I may offer up a piece of, piece of the puzzle and I'm like, oh, that's too much like this piece over here. Let's t- change you a little bit yeah, um, to make it all fit together and make a, a coherent whole. With, with all that being said, and, you know, I know the fact that the voice acting community is probably not huge. So you're, you're friends with all the different voice actors. But, yeah. uh, you know, the fact that Mortal Kombat 11's Noob Saiba ended up sounding so significantly different than mm-hmm. your rendition of it. Did you have any feelings about that or how did what did you think about the, that character's voice oh um i'm trying to think if I, i'm not sure i heard it because of course there was a bit of eh, kerfuffle um <laughs> i mean it didn't he's uh, he's a younger actor so it was a younger kind of sounding voice um i can't remember who played it sean shiplock Sean did. Okay, that's right. Um, I think we even met at a premiere of another game. It's funny, and right around that time, I think, because we, I think we just we we talked about it. But um, I don't. I mean, the thing about voice actors is we're very supportive of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so somebody else getting your gig uh, or doing your character. Um, you know, in, unless there was some kind of weird uh, machination behind it, but it wasn't. They just went with a different direction, and that's mm-hmm. totally the prerogative of the rights holder uh, and the producers and the directors involved. Um, and they have you know a myriad of reasons you know why they would want to change the voice. So that's you know I don't have ownership of my characters in that way. Uh, you can't as an actor, I think, because then you could start get <clears throat> start to you know, feel bad. And, and, you know, why do I want to feel bad about? Yeah, there's plenty of work out there. I'm still working. You know, Sean's got his, you know, he's, he's got that. That's great. So there's not. Um, you know, there's no kind of funky feeling about it, really. Yeah, no, no bad blood. I mean, I've been replaced more times. To- Many times <laughs> and I've replaced other people. So, you know, it happens and it, it is totally as an actor, you give up a certain amount of control mm-hmm. over your not exactly career, but your characters. We don't own them. Um, you know, when when fans ask us to do oh, do this voice, do that voice, we have to be careful because, again, we don't own the character those character voices are actually the rights to them are owned by the, by Warner brothers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you gotta be careful what you do and don't that's, say that's anything. That's, you know, <laughs> so we don't, um, yeah, don't, don't have that kind of ownership. Um, mm-hmm. you have to kind of give that up. And if you don't give it up, you know, then it just, it eats at your soul. So, hmm. yeah, I have a much more peace, peaceful soul. Uh, yeah. Speaking on taking a, another role from another uh, another fellow voice actor, are there any specific Mortal Kombat characters that you wish you could have voiced or would like to voice in the future? Oh. Hmm. Well, the announcer was great, so he's fun. <laughs> um, really liked Ermac. Uh, any other ones, though? I don't know. I mean, Epcar and I have similar voices. So, I mean, and Raiden is such a great character, but he does such a wonderful job with it. So, 
Um, yeah, it's a good point. Although Dave Mitchell got to do him in, oh, what was the, there was some kind of, I can't remember what oh, it was. Oh, in uh, where, Scorpion's Revenge, I think it was. was. It? it was in the was like latest film? animation movie, yes. It was on the, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And, Def- and Defenders of the Realm. Do, um, Wasn't it? No. What was the uh, name? Yes. I, was, uh, no. Was that it? I, I, can't I, I, I can't believe I'm forgetting it now. <laughs> but so, but yeah, I mean, Raiden's kind of cool. Yep. He's kind of cool. Okay. Raiden would be a, a pretty cool pick, although maybe Richard Epcar might not be so happy about that, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he and I have shared other roles before. <laughs> I, I think at this point, it's kind of become Richard's baby. <laughs> oh, yes. It very much is Richard's baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he does a great job with it. So that's good. Yeah. Battle of the Realms. Not Defenders of the Realm. Battle, Battle of the Realms. That's it. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, that's right. Because yes. they, they took off uh, Scorpion's Revenge voice actor and switched him out for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Is that the case? I, I think so. Uh, I'll have to look it up afterwards. I'll, I think you're, sure. you're talking about Patrick Seitz, right? <laughs> Patrick Seitz was taken off as Scorpion in MK11, but still oh. voice acted for Battle of the Realms, as far as I remember. Okay. D- do you have any other ongoing uh, projects that you'd like to possibly share with our viewers if you can? Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, with non-disclosure agreements, um, <laughs> anything I'm currently working on, I can't talk about. I'm trying to think of if there's anything coming out that I could. Mm, not really. Um, <laughs> commencement ceremonies and names to read. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that's, that's fun, but it's not ex- terribly exciting for the general public. I, I hope you get somebody's name that just happens to be you know, you get a Johnny Cage or something. <laughs> that <he's announced. laughs> Might not be any new cyborgs, though. <laughs> Sometimes people will write in some um, some interesting things. Uh, we used to get when G- Game of Thrones was first out. There was a lot of first of his names. Or first of her name. <laughs> and like, no, you can't say that. But, you know, <laughs> they'll they'll write in some fun stuff. You know, it's like, mm, no, what's your what's your real name? so before we let you go can you tell us what is your favorite mortal Kombat finisher like fatality friendship (laughs) i don't play enough to have one um so the ones that i've seen i'm just amazed at the creativity behind him Uh uh-huh um oh and having read uh david craddock's book uh how they made those work yeah. Uh, especially in the beginning, it's just phenomenal. I mean, I'm just amazed at at Ed Boone and John Tobias and how they kind of went. Okay, now go, do this. Get on this ladder. <laughs> get in this position, and, and then like do it all slow motion. And the, the martial artists are like, "You want me to what?" <laughs> okay. Or you know, fly through the air slower. That's going to be a tough call. Um, <laughs> Oh, but some of that, oh, the, the, I, I think the ripping the spine out and beating them with the head. Uh, that <laughs> oh, was yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I can't remember whose fatality that is, um, but that's one that just is so out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's pretty funny. So that one sticks in my mind. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, uh, so we'd like to ask you if possible uh, i know you've mentioned mm-hmm. that you have to be careful about voices would you be able to do yes. a couple of voice lines for us or is that not a thing um well what do we need what, what do you want to do well, let's we're thinking can... since you've since you've appeared as both noob cyborg and ermac maybe a voice line each is would that be all right i have no flaws oh, that actually sounded just like oh, it. <laughs> oh did it okay <laughs> well, I, can, I, can, I can certainly do what i uh, because I think Noob was, yeah, more me. It wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. Uh, y- yeah, Timo? Mortal Kombat 9, he, he, his intro, usually he would show up and just say, fear me. That too, yeah. Um, I don't okay. know if that, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll go for the I have no flaws one. So it's just, <laughs> I have no flaws. 
Perfect. Noob's not what's in here with us right now, though. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and we do. Me, yes. Uh, yeah. And if you don't, wouldn't then, mind, um, Ermac. Ermac. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, Ermac. Mm. We are many. You are but one. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, that's <laughs> Yes. What Ermac was doing is that, was that, that, that kind of it's slightly evil and slightly ghostly and just gnarly. Yeah, there was a perfect, um, yeah, the other otherworldliness to it that uh, he was a lot of fun, kind of ethereal. <laughs> yes, yes, there was an ethereal quality, and it's that whole idea of multiple souls woven together, mm -hmm. um, you know, and not. Borg like, but not trying to be Borg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love hearing, you know, the voice actors' perception of of the characters they played. It's cool. Like, yeah. It's been great talking to you and being able to see this game through your eyes throughout this interview. Ah, Getting some yeah. insight into the characters through you, how you saw them when yeah. you were actually recording them. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, it was interesting, not, you know, I, I mean, I came, especially in nine not knowing much at all and then having to learn the lore and, and delving into it uh over the years um has been uh it's been a lot of fun and just a a never-ending source of uh of amusement and joy and uh hope mortal Kombat continues for many years and we it's, hope so too it's been a lot of fun we really enjoy yeah, having really. you in mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. you have your voices it's just yeah <laughs> so I'm, where, I'm already petitioning uh, you as the announcer for the next Mortal Kombat just so yeah, you know. thank you <laughs> uh, so where can our listeners find you oh um, I'm on uh, Twitter at, at Jameson Price uh, so that's there and I think that's also my Instagram handle uh, though I don't spend as much time on Instagram I'm, you know, old, so I'm on Facebook. <laughs> um, Facebook, I have a, a Jameson Price public page, which um, I try to check, uh, you know, for messages and things. Um, but again, I try to post what I can, but it's very difficult. As voice actors, we can't talk about what we do mm -hmm. at all. Um, though I'm amazed, I am seeing a lot of uh, Twitter announcements of of people doing anime, and I'm like, Really? You're not allowed to say that? Because I know the stuff I've signed says you can't talk about any of this stuff anytime, anywhere, and any platform now known or ever to be created. Uh, so, uh, and so, yeah, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, oh, and then my website, um, which is jamesonkprice.com, has uh, some my audio demos, but also has a video yes. demo, which is kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> it's, it's old. Uh, I think, no, did it get Westworld on there? So it's not that old. I can't remember if it's, I'm not sure if, did I see Westworld on there? I, I have to check. That. But there's uh, days of our lives, which, oh my gosh. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was, that was pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. Back before I had gray hair. Oh boy. <laughs> Jameson Price, the heartthrob, saves your life. <laughs> um, that, this is how I'm going to get my, my family to listen to this now. <laughs> oh. Well, Mr. Price, Jameson Price, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. So we'd just like to thank you for joining thank us. Thank you on so the much. Podcast. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> you guys are a lot of fun. Great. And thank you for all our listeners for stopping by the Realmcast. Uh, you can find Yanni and myself on the Mortal Kombat group on Facebook, as well as Yanni. He's also on the Mortal Kombat Meme Realm, which is also on Instagram. Special thanks to Uppercut Editions for their continued support. And the Realmcast is the official podcast of Mortal Kombat Online. You can catch up on all episodes of the Realmcast on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, Spotify, and MortalKombatOnline.com.
best wins. Flawless victory.